Zhaoshan, China. In 2018, Boeing opened its first assembly plant within Chinese territory. Inside this facility, Boeing assembles 737s, the same aircraft that's made them the world's largest aerospace company for over a century. But there's a problem. Every Boeing executive in this room knows that China is studying every single move, documenting every process, learning how to replicate what took Boeing years to perfect. In fact, over the past decade, China has faced repeated accusations of intellectual property theft, and Western intelligence agencies have accused China of systematic espionage, targeting advanced aircraft designs and sensitive defense documents. And Boeing's response? They opened a second facility, and Airbus did the same in Tianjin. These aren't accidents. These are billion-dollar decisions approved by the smartest aerospace executives on the planet. So what's really going on here? Why would these companies risk everything they've built by exposing their secrets to a country actively trying to destroy their duopoly? The answer is far more complex than you might think, and it reveals a fascinating tension between massive short-term profits and potentially catastrophic long-term consequences. Welcome to the billion-dollar trap that might finish Western aviation dominance forever. To understand this strategic gamble, we first need to grasp the sheer magnitude of what's happening in Chinese skies. The Chinese aviation market isn't just growing, it's exploding at a pace the world has never seen before. By 2035, analysts project that over 1 billion Chinese travelers will take to the skies annually. Think about that for a moment. 1 billion passengers. That's more than the entire population of Europe, all needing planes to fly them across this massive country. This unprecedented demand translates into an absolutely staggering need for new aircraft. According to Boeing's latest market outlook, Chinese carriers will require approximately 8,700 new planes by 2040. We're not talking about small regional jets here. These are primarily narrow-body aircraft like the 737 and A320, the workhorses of commercial aviation. When you run the numbers, this represents nearly a trillion dollars in potential sales over the next two decades. China alone could account for nearly a quarter of global aircraft demand over this period. Miss out on China, and you're essentially conceding a massive chunk of the future aviation industry. For Boeing and Airbus, who've long dominated global aircraft manufacturing, turning away from this market simply isn't an option. But here's where things get interesting and frankly, a bit uncomfortable for the Western duopoly. China isn't content with just buying planes forever. The Chinese government has poured billions into COMAC, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, with a crystal clear objective, build domestic aircraft that can eventually replace Western imports and challenge Boeing and Airbus on the global stage. COMAC's flagship aircraft, the C919, is designed to directly compete with the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. It's China's bold statement that they're serious about ending their dependence on Western aviation technology. And if you think this is just empty ambition, consider China's track record. They've already disrupted industries from telecommunications to high-speed rail by first learning from Western companies and then eventually surpassing them. The concerns go even deeper. Western intelligence agencies and companies have repeatedly accused China of systematic intellectual property theft and corporate espionage. There are documented cases of Chinese nationals attempting to steal trade secrets from aviation companies. So when Boeing and Airbus set up shop in China, they're not just entering a competitive market, they're potentially handing their playbook to someone actively trying to copy it. Given these risks, why would Boeing and Airbus even consider manufacturing in China? The answer lies in understanding how business actually works in the Chinese market. You see, nearly every major Chinese airline is state-owned or heavily state-influenced. China Eastern, China Southern, Air China. They don't make procurement decisions in isolation. These decisions flow through a complex web of government influence and approval. When Chinese airlines need to buy hundreds of planes worth billions of dollars, these aren't purely commercial transactions. They're strategic decisions that require implicit and sometimes explicit approval from Chinese Communist Party leadership. In this environment, simply building great planes and offering competitive prices isn't enough. You need to demonstrate commitment to China itself. 
You need to show that you're invested in the Chinese economy, creating Chinese jobs, and transferring knowledge and technology to Chinese workers. This is where the facilities become crucial. Boeing operates a 737 completion center in Zhoushan, where aircraft are painted, furnished with interiors, and undergo final preparations before delivery to regional customers. Airbus has gone even further, establishing a complete assembly line in Tianjin that doesn't just finish planes. It builds A320 family aircraft from scratch, assembling major components shipped from Europe into finished aircraft. These facilities serve as tangible proof of commitment. They create thousands of Chinese jobs, generate tax revenue, and demonstrate that these Western companies view China as more than just a customer. They see it as a manufacturing partner, this goodwill is essential for winning those massive aircraft orders. In the cutthroat competition between Boeing and Airbus, having local facilities has become less of an advantage and more of a necessity. And of course, this strategy comes with serious risks. The most obvious concern is intellectual property theft. While Boeing and Airbus maintain ownership and operational control of their Chinese facilities, the proximity alone creates opportunities for information to leak. Chinese authorities could potentially monitor operations, workers could be recruited to share information, and suppliers could be pressured to reveal details about manufacturing processes. Now, some aspects of aircraft design remain relatively protected. The most sensitive components, engines, avionics, advanced materials, are manufactured elsewhere and shipped to China as completed units. For instance, the CFM LEAP engines that power both the 737 MAX and A320neo are incredibly sophisticated pieces of technology. They use advanced additive manufacturing techniques and cutting-edge materials science that took decades to develop. Interestingly, China has been studying these engines intensively for years. The LEAP engine actually powers the C919 as well, giving Chinese engineers direct access to examine it. Yet despite this access, industry analysts estimate that Chinese turbofan technology still lags roughly 20 years behind Western capabilities. Comac hasn't been able to reverse engineer the most advanced components, even with engines literally in their hands. This suggests that keeping core technology secret is possible, even in China. However, there's another dimension to this risk that's perhaps even more concerning. Comac has actually shown it can design competitive aircraft, but what Comac struggles with is something that sounds mundane, but is actually crucial. Efficient, high-volume manufacturing. Building commercial aircraft quickly, reliably, and at scale is extraordinarily difficult. It's not just about having the blueprints. It's about developing the processes, supply chains, and quality control systems. Currently, Comac produces roughly one C919 per month. With China needing 8,700 new aircraft over the next two decades, this production rate is laughably inadequate. This is where Boeing and Airbus's Chinese facilities become particularly valuable to Comac. These aren't startup operations figuring things out. These are mature, optimized assembly lines for the 737 and A320 aircraft that have been in production for decades. In fact, both companies can produce more than one aircraft per day, with ambitions to reach 70 units per month by decade's end. So every day these facilities operate in China, they are essentially providing a masterclass in modern aircraft manufacturing. How do you organize a production line? How do you manage just-in-time delivery of thousands of components? How do you maintain quality while increasing speed? These are the questions Comac desperately needs answered. And now, they have front row seats to the world's best aircraft manufacturers demonstrating the solutions. So here's the billion dollar question. If the risks are so obvious, why don't Boeing and Airbus just agree not to build in China? Even though it's logical to avoid China completely, we need to understand strategic decision-making in competitive environments. Imagine your Airbus trying to decide whether to build in China. You think about what Boeing might do. If Boeing decides not to build facilities in China, then your best move is definitely to build. Why? Because you'd build a strong relationship with Chinese regulators, win more orders, and capture a larger share of that trillion-dollar market you'd be giving yourself a massive competitive advantage. But what if Boeing does decide to build in China? Well, now if you don't build, you're at a serious disadvantage. Boeing will win Chinese favor, secure more orders, and you'll lose market share. So your best move is still to build, even though you know it exposes your manufacturing processes to Comac. No matter what Boeing does, building in China is your best option.
Now flip this around and think from Boeing's perspective. The exact same logic applies. Regardless of what Airbus does, Boeing's optimal choice is to build in China. This creates what we might call a strategic trap. Both companies would collectively be better off if neither built facilities in China. They'd preserve their manufacturing secrets while still splitting the Chinese market. But individually, each company has an overwhelming incentive to build, regardless of what the other does. There's simply too much money at stake to trust that your competitor will cooperate. But building in China isn't purely about risk. There are substantial benefits that help offset the strategic gamble these companies are taking. First, let's talk about cost. Chinese manufacturing labor offers significant savings compared to the United States or Europe. But here's the crucial part. We're not just talking about cheap labor. China has spent decades becoming the world's factory, and that means their workforce is highly skilled in advanced manufacturing. As a result, Chinese workers at Boeing and Airbus facilities are genuinely capable of producing aircraft to exacting standards. This combination, skilled labor at lower cost, directly improves profit margins. Over hundreds of aircraft, the cost advantages add up to billions of dollars. If Boeing and Airbus reinvest these savings into research and development, they can potentially maintain their technological edge over COMAC, even if some manufacturing knowledge leaks. But there's another critical benefit that's become increasingly relevant in our current political climate, protection from geopolitical turbulence. Tensions between China and the West have intensified dramatically in recent years. We've recently seen trade wars, tariffs, sanctions, and political disputes that seemed unthinkable a decade ago. These tensions have real financial consequences. Tariffs on imported goods can add 10%, 20%, or even higher costs to products sold in China. For aircraft costing tens of millions of dollars each, these tariffs represent huge sums of money. They can make aircraft significantly less competitive or cut deeply into profit margins. By manufacturing or completing aircraft within China itself, Boeing and Airbus partially insulate themselves from these political winds. A plane assembled in Tianjin or Zhoushan isn't subject to the same import tariffs as one shipped directly from Seattle or Toulouse. This geographic diversification provides stability in an increasingly unstable geopolitical landscape. So where does this leave us? In the short term, everyone appears to benefit. Boeing and Airbus gain access to the world's largest aviation market, reduce manufacturing costs, and protect themselves from tariffs. They're banking that the profits from this strategy can fund the R&D needed to stay ahead technologically. China and Comac gain access to Western manufacturing expertise that could take decades to develop independently. They're observing firsthand how the world's best aircraft manufacturers organize production, manage quality, and achieve efficiency. In theory, this could be a win-win situation. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Boeing and Airbus are playing a high-stakes game with uncertain outcomes. China has shown remarkable patience in playing the long game. They're willing to spend decades learning, iterating, and improving. Boeing and Airbus, driven by quarterly earnings and shareholder demands, are essentially training their own replacement. The facilities they built to win Chinese business today are becoming the classrooms where Comac learns to defeat them tomorrow. By 2040, we may look back and recognize this as the moment Western aviation dominance began its inevitable decline. Not because of inferior technology, but because capitalism's short-term incentives made any other choice impossible. Boeing and Airbus aren't really making a choice here. They're trapped in a system where competition forces them to sacrifice long-term survival for short-term market share. And that's the uncomfortable reality of modern global business.